This is a foreign object. Do you want this in your body? No, you get sick. Same thing with this little chip. People, animals can get sick if you have foreign Proceed objects one in mile, your body. Two. beautiful CVPs, welcome to my channel. It's a beautiful day to be alive. If you are new here, welcome. I'm Caroline von Hittel. Please hit the subscribe button and the bell, bing, so you don't miss any episode of my awesome channel and my life. And today I'm gonna give you six reasons why I do not microchip my birds. Here are the six reasons. So without further ado, here are the six reasons. And this is just for me, um, not for everybody. This is what I think specifically. Now it's different if you have a dog or a cat, but I don't have a dog or a cat. I have birds and this is my reason just because of birds. The last video what you saw where I went on a meet, free fly meetup, you saw that this Maka got my kitchen. So I just want to talk really fast about why I do not microchip my birds. Okay, so first things first, microchipping birds is useless. Basically, this is my opinion. You are entitled for your opinion, but this is solely my opinion, what I think about microchipping. It's totally useless and these are the reasons why. Listen me out, listen to those reasons and you can always comment something else if you want but these these are my reasons why i do not microchip my birds number one microchipping has been around since over 20 years they were like experimenting with it and they started with animals dogs and cats a lot of dogs and cats they don't talk about it but google it uh, a lot of dogs and cats get cancer through the microchipping number two it's a foreign object in your body like who wants a foreign object in your body? This is a foreign object. Do you want this in your body? No, you get sick. Same thing with this little chip. People, animals can get sick if you have foreign Proceed objects mile, in your body. Two. So I don't want any foreign object in my body. Number three. Once your pet is microchip and maybe it works good for dogs and cats, but it will not work good for birds because a when a bird when when my flying birds fly, they microchip right in the breast and it goes into the breast muscles and then it moves around. So it's it, because it's a foreign object, it's it's damaging the breast muscles. It's all over the place. You never know where this microchip can like swim around in your body. Number four. Okay, so if it's a dog or cat, they scan it when somebody like bring in a lost pet and they scan with them with the gun, the, they can scan and they can see exactly who's the owner. But the thing is, the thing is, if there's no owner's finder, if the finder founds your bird, let's say your bird flew away, it's microchip and he founds it, usually it's very different with birds birds are not really often get turned in if somebody find a bird they will end up keeping it clipping their wings and put them in a cage so microchip at that point is totally useless number five what i why i don't microchip my bird because it costs money. It can cost money to do the procedure, but it also costs money on a website. There is a yearly annual fee that you have to pay on a website. You have to register your microchip bad pet. And then every year you pay like, I think like in California, it's like between 90 to $120 just to register uh, to keep your pet updated. Number six. Uh, number six, I don't microchip my birds because I believe as a Christian, it's a mark in the flesh. What the Bible says, it's a mark of the bees. The mark of the bees is the technology of the Antichrist. So I don't want to like endorse it or I don't want to like kind of like, like have my pet have a technology that is um, developed by the Antichrist. Okay, so these are my six reasons why I do not 
microchip my birds. Oh, here are seven reasons. And number seven, to microchip a bird, they, the vet has to hold them down. Look at this picture. If you don't just even think this picture is heartbreaking, that's the reason why I don't like vets. I have a love-hate relationship with vets. So I don't want to stress my bird to get the microchip. And this is one reason more uh, for not getting the microchip. Just the fact how how they abuse the bird and just like hold them down to get a chip. All right, these are my opinions for not microchipping my birds. If you... I just saw that dog on the floor. Oh my god, it's so sad. Dog just got run over. <sighs> the onset of the coronavirus pandemic is forcing institutions around the world to rethink about one particularly germy service cold hard cash. This is going to be hard to hear, but according to multiple studies, microorganisms found living on the surface of cash and even credit cards range from mouth and vaginal bacteria to flu-like viruses. But what if you can make your daily purchases without touching a thing? Welcome to Sweden where thousands of people are inserting tiny microchips under their skin so that they no longer have to carry cash, IDs, gym passes, and key cards to get into work. I have two microchip implants, one on the right and one on the left. I got the micro implants because I wanted to be part of the future. I don't need keys, so I'm able to actually open the doors um, with my hands. These tiny chips are about the size of a grain of rice, and they're implanted into the back of the hand with a syringe. And so far, about 3,000 Swedes have gotten them implemented. So in Sweden, you can actually use it to put your train tickets inside. You can actually use it with Scandinavia's biggest gym chain, so you don't actually need to show your membership card. I use it personally as a business card, so you can actually put your phone on my hand and then my LinkedIn pops up. So who's behind this technology? This is Hans Seppien Showblood, and he's the CEO and co-founder of Disruptive Subdermals. They're one of the leading companies when it comes to developing microchip technologies. I first encountered chip implants for humans it's almost 10 years ago. Uh, I felt that this is a very interesting technology that we could potentially do some awesome things with. So I bought a bunch online, got together a bunch of friends, and we had our first chip implant party. One reason for getting an implant is simply convenience. Uh, it allows you to eliminate some of the clutter in your life. Implants can also be used for making payments. For example, here at Epicenter in Stockholm, we use our implants in different vending machines, buying snacks and candy and juices whenever we feel like it. Microchips may sound too futuristic for you, but Sweden is expected to be the world's first cashless economy by March of 2023. But now, microchips could be used for more than just convenience. They have the potential to change healthcare and the way governments are handling the coronavirus crisis. I am convinced that smart implants will provide a marvelous value to people who suffer from different health conditions and need to be able to log their vital parameters on a regular basis. It could be body temperature, pulse, blood pressure. And imagine if you could just do that by swiping yourself with a smartphone at any time. For example, the implants that we designed allow people to measure their body temperature it has some very interesting applications to see how fever is spreading in the population. And I think that we will really need those tools to not least understand the ongoing pandemic, but in particular to be able to spot future pandemics uh, at an early stage. But how safe is your data in a body chip? So I'm not particularly concerned about the hacking dimension of implants because ultimately the processing of data doesn't happen in the implant. It's simply a sensor platform. All the processing happens in the smartphone. That's where the data is uh, analyzed and where it's packaged and presented. Cybertech experts still cite potential issues with data handling. If data isn't secure, others can access your info. And once it's out there, it's hard to get back. 
And in some cases, users could even be giving their data away without even realizing it in the terms and conditions that they sign on their smartphones. But with the way technology is headed, we could see a future where microchip implanting becomes the norm. I believe that I'm going to be able to use my microchips with, to do payments in the future, identification, tickets. In Sweden, every shop, in every kiosk, in public transport, there are always these touch terminals where people either touch their phone or their wallet with a credit card inside. So this means that the infrastructure for making payments also with an implant are already there. The question is, could this black mirror type of technology be implemented in other countries? Angelic Parrots, go check out also my book, angelicparrots.com, go get your book, and that's it, thank you.